being here today. And those that are fasting during Ramadan, I know how difficult this is, but I know what an enormous act of solidarity it is to be out today on the streets of London as people are out on the streets of pretty well every capital city all around the world today. They're marching because we have this strange narrative from the world's media that the victims and the oppressed the imprisoned and the limited access to food and medicine and water, the victims of occupation are somehow the cause of the problem. We have this bizarre concoction of media stories that turns reality on its head. I've been nine times to Palestine and Gaza, particularly Gaza. Every time I go to Gaza, I go with optimism. Every time I leave Gaza, I feel humble and angry at the way people are treated. Nearly two million people in prison, a one kilometre long zone around the Gaza Strip that anyone that ventures onto it, be it a farmer or a child, will be shot by an automatic weapon pointing at where they come from. Anyone that goes out to sea will find their vessel shot by the Israeli Navy. Young people, 70% unemployed, more than half of whom are university graduates. We have the best educated and least employed population in the world in the Gaza Strip. And are they angry? Sure they are angry. Why wouldn't you be angry if your electricity supply is cut off, your water supply is cut off, your food supply is limited, your medical supplies are limited? And all the time, there are drone aircraft flying overhead. There have been 200, no, 300 Palestinians killed in the past 10 days. But there's been Palestinians killed every week, year after year after year, as these targeted attacks on particular homes in the Gaza Strip. If this was happening anywhere else in the world, anywhere else in the world, You'd have Obama, you'd have Putin, you'd have Alain, you'd have Cameron, you'd have them all condemning it. And, pr and pricing sanctions and denial of human rights. Palestinian children deserve rights. Palestinian people